Ring-a-ding-ding, it's time for a curse that ends in a hearse. <laughs> we already covered the life and death of Rudolph Valentino. We're, we're dipping back to some things from the past, aren't yeah. we? Maybe this was our this very one. first creepy Christmas was Rudolph Valentino. Rudolph Valentino's... The, the woman in black. Yeah, so we talked about him, the very first one. So just as a refresher, Rudolph Valentino, he was an Italian guy who played characters from every other race than Italian. In the <laughs> early days of Hollywood, it became one of the first real movie stars. He was the first non-white crush for white women. He was white. But he played like a... Yeah, the, yeah. The right, chic yeah, and stuff right. and people are like oh my god this guy is so, from such a different country tall dark handsome and accented tall dark and handsome but my parents won't object <laughs> his big things were the four horsemen of the apocalypse right. which i pretty i remember making a joke about that uh yeah. eight years ago <laughs> blood and sand and of course the chic. the chic he was a massive heartthrob whose early death drove fans out of their minds with grief listen back to that one if you want to hear more women about in him. italy killing themselves i think something like that kind of uh <laughs> they oh, had a lot of reasons a dramatic attack Italian woman? <laughs> Never. But behind that narrative that we already discovered yeah. of unthinkable fame that met a tragic end early may have been a piece of jewelry that was responsible for it. A cursed ring, perhaps? Who knows? At the height of his fame, Rudy, as I'm going to call him. Yeah. Rudy! Rudy V. Was in San Francisco filming a movie and passed by an antique store. Again, beat for beat, this is our intro. <laughs> he passed by an antique store and something inside of it caught his eye, a ring. It was a silver ring with a type of quartz crystal set in it known as a tiger's eye because of the way the light reflects off of it it looks like a tiger's eyeball okay in a mystical sense this type of stone is supposed to grant you stability and insight and the name of this particular ring was the ring of destiny oh man that's a big deal and it could all be his for the price that only the biggest movie star in the world could afford seven dollars <laughs> back then break back the then, bank he could buy san francisco <laughs> for that price that's how much he got paid to be in the chic <laughs> but the shopkeeper didn't want to sell it to him because he told him that this ring was cursed. Every previous owner of this ring met with bad luck, but Rudy said to hell with curses. I only believe in the mystical things that work out in my favor and nothing bad will ever happen to me. So he bought the ring. Oh boy. And boy, did he look gaudy in that thing. I mean, it's a $7 quartz crystal ring. It's yeah. not, you know, it's just a tacky sort of thing. He seemed to wear it all the time. There's even a painting by Federico Beltran Massis of Rudy and his girlfriend Pola Negri where she's actually wearing the ring in this portrait of really? the two of them. I'm really impressed that we have and through the intro and through this although there's still time we haven't talked a lot about lord of the rings there's still time there's still time Don't uh worry. i pray to never talk about it go ahead Ooh, who are you bilbo <laughs> It wasn't all oil poetry, oil por oil portraits, oil poetry. oil portraits. We watched the Sunshine Boys with Walter Matthau and George Burns. Yeah, and oh boy. now I oil portraits on Toys Day. <laughs> it wasn't all oil portraits and tacky accessories. Supposedly, Rudy showed the ring to a friend of his not long after he bought it, and inside the gem of the ring, the friend saw a vision of Rudy dying a premature death. But again, do you tell him on the spot or do you tell other people? <laughs> what do you think of this? Do you want my honest opinion? Yeah, honest opinion. I'm, I see you die in that. I don't mean to be too forward. Yeah, but that I you're foresaw worried. your death in the piece of jewelry you bought from Antique Store. So what are we going to get for so, brunch? What's brunch? So Who's splitting this bill? So you like it. <laughs> but again, he's Rudolph Valentino. And nobody's going to tell him how to get lucky. He knows how to get lucky. <laughs> so he kept on wearing the ring and he even used it as part of his costume on his next movie, The Young Raja. Again, he's that non-white boy. Oh, who is he? Which became The Young Raja, the first flop of his career. <laughs> not only that, it was the only flop of his career. Not only, not only that, it was so big of a flop. All the footage of it was lost until the year 2005 oh my God. and even then only parts of it were found and it's still flopped even we've been waiting for this movie for 80 <laughs> years here it is <laughs> it has negative views on youtube <laughs> it took his career two years to recover from this before he was even allowed to be in another movie rudolph valentino of the chic biggest, the movie, biggest star, movie star and he makes this movie and he's out of movies for two years oh my god was he julia roberts <laughs> <laughs> what did he just decide to have a happy life that didn't <laughs> depend on the whims of other people <laughs> this was enough of a warning shot from the ring that he decided maybe Maybe this whole curse thing might be real so he took off the ring and kept it in storage until four years later apparently he forgot all about the young raja and he was ready to make the son of the sheik and he thought you know what I've got a great ring oh for this God. costume. I know just the thing. So he took it out of storage, wore it in that movie also. This time, he didn't even get to see if his movie flop because he died before it was released to the general public. Wow. The so, ring strangled him on the spot. <laughs> I told you. I told you. That leave me in storage, the, his, the, pal. The ring was also his agent. I was a big fan of young Raja. See? Why didn't you let me be in the five <laughs> horsemen of the apocalypse? So on August 15th, 1926, Rudolph Valentino collapsed in front of his hotel in Manhattan with what turned out to be a complication of appendicitis. 
Titus. Whoa. Suddenly, this guy's really uh, relatable to yeah, me. Yeah, suddenly, um, I get so, it. So it was a complication of appendicitis and ulcers. I think it was kidney stones. It was so rare, though. This particular thing yeah. that killed him, it's so rare that it's now known as Valentino syndrome. Whoa. And on Garrett August... disease and Valentino pretty syndrome? Pretty much. He had both of them. <laughs> on August 23, he died at age 31. On his finger, when he collapsed, was the ring of destiny. Really? So now the ring took him, but a curse on a star like that doesn't just go away. The curse exploded out from around him. You'll remember from the first time we talked about him dying that there were riots in the street. People were so upset yeah. that he died. A lady in London drank poison and killed herself because of it. And a guy in Paris covered himself in pictures of Rudy and then killed himself as well. Two women tried to kill themselves in front of the hospital that he was in. Right. So it drove people insane. But yeah. with Rudy dead, his belongings now had to be dealt with. Paul Negri wanted something to remember him by. So of course she chose his favorite ring. She started wearing it herself and ended up marrying some guy and tried to have a baby but sadly she suffered a miscarriage not long after that she got struck with a serious illness that i could not find what it was exactly but she got so sick that it completely sidelined her career yes. and it never really picked up the momentum she had been building we're talking about scary things and a baby's crying baby's in the distance. crying while we were sitting by a warm fire? How is this normal? <laughs> I didn't invite this baby in. <laughs> but supposedly, once she stopped wearing that ring, she mysteriously started getting better all of a sudden. A little while later, she started performing on stage with the singer named Russ Colombo. Colombo, or as he was born, Ruggiero Eugenio Di Rodolfo Colombo. Russ is good. <laughs> it's an acronym for <laughs> all of his other names. This guy, Russ Colombo, had replaced Bing Crosby as the lead singer of the Coconut Grove Orchestra. Okay and was well on his way to following in the footsteps of Crosby as well because not only could he sing but he looked like Rudolph Valentino really? like almost exactly like Rudolph Valentino so much so that he was known as Radio's Valentino or the Singing Valentino so his star was rising and had just starred in a movie for Universal called Wake Up and Dream and Negri liked him so much because of his resemblance to her old boyfriend that she decided Creepy. to give her old boyfriend's old ring to him as a token of affection were they not getting it? why would I mean a couple incidents a couple incidents. A cu oh, oh, I, I almost died. Rudolph oh. died wearing it. It's it a takes like, like it's like advertising. You got to hear the ad eight times before it sinks in, <laughs> and we'll get to eight. Don't worry. So she gave it to him as a token of affection. Colombo gladly accepted it and started wearing it because why wouldn't he want to wear Rudolph Valentino's old ring? Not long after this, <laughs> this is insane. On September second, nineteen thirty-four, he visited his friend, the photographer Lansing Brown, and it was either his home or his studio. Either way, there was an antique pistol hanging on the wall. You're kidding. You think you know where this is going? His friend grabbed a cigarette and to light the match, he struck it on the antique pistol, which somehow fired its bullet, which hit a table and then bounced off the table and hit Columbo in the forehead and killed him at age 26, the ring of destiny on his finger. Who wrote this? Tex Avery? What? I lit and a then, match against an old antique and gun And then it hanging. scared a bird and the bird flew over the pie and it knocked <laughs> over the pie. So strangely enough- Is that how Russ Columbo died? That's how Russ Columbo died. Strangely enough, he actually had a date that night with Carol. Lombard, who herself would go on to die in a plane crash eight years later. Another weird side note to Russ Colombo's story is that when he died, his mom was having some serious heart problems and the family decided that the shock of his death would kill her. So instead of telling her, they pretended he was alive and sent her letters addressed from him, even some written by Carol Lombard. They kept this up until the day she died 10 years later. I don't know how they did that. My son doesn't want to see me. Yeah. Oh my God, what if they had like a Weekend at Bernie's thing with <laughs> Russ Colombo's body? A big bullet hole in his forehead. Just mummify him. He can go anywhere. That's that's what? tragic. That's uh, so it's, upsetting it's, to it's me. It's almost worse of, of her, like, he hasn't seen me in 10 years. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Now, with Columbo dead, the ring was claimed by his cousin, who didn't want it. So he gave it to an entertainer named Joe Casino, who knew who that ring belonged to and knew its reputation, but still decided... I want this ring. Oh my God. Someone even offered him $300 for it, but no way was he going to part with this thing. But he was still kind of freaked out, it seems, because he decided to keep it locked up. Okay. But after a little bit, he decided probably is fake it's yeah. just coincidences <laughs> so he puts the ring on a week later got hit by a truck and died <laughs> God. At this point, word got out and people started drawing the connection by the general public between all these incidents and this ring. So now Rudolph Valentino's cursed ring was a matter of public knowledge. After Joe Casino died, the ring went to his brother, Del, I assume Del Casino, which is... Uh, it's Spanish for other casino. <laughs> Del Taco's expanding. <laughs> They've got Del Casino, we got Del Hamburger, <laughs> Del Wahlburgers. So Del wanted nothing to do with this curse, so he locked it up in a safe inside his house. But as the years went on, the newspapers hadn't heard of any new victims victims of the curse. So they decided the curse is probably done. So Dell decided I'm going to start wearing the ring. Enough time has passed. I'm done mourning the curse. <laughs> Surprisingly, nothing bad ever happened to Dell. 
But then he got real cocky and started loaning the ring out to people who wanted to borrow Watch, it. Watch, doesn't do anything. Watch. <laughs> Try it. See, just wear it for like a month. If you don't like it, I'll get it off your dead body. <laughs> <laughs> One person was a movie producer named Edward Small who had done The Count of Monte Cristo and Brewster's Millions. And now he was working on a biopic of Rudolph Valentino and was gathering a bunch of Rudy's actual old belongings to use in the movie. And the crown jewel, which is just a ring, was the ring. <laughs> Dell agreed to loaning it to Small, who then gave it to a guy named Jack Dunn. Dunn was a world-class figure skater who was the captain of the 1936 Olympic skating team for Britain, and he also used to date Sonia Henney, but now, like Sonia Henney, he wanted to start acting in movies. Right. Now, Dunn also had a very strong resemblance to Rudolph Valentino, so Small called him in to do a screen test to star in the movie and gave him the ring. Wear this during the screen test. It mm -hmm. seemed to go great, and he was all set to star in this new Hollywood movie. Like, this, his career yeah. is gonna explode now. To celebrate, Dunn went on a hunting trip with some of his friends in Texas. And again, you think you know where this is going, but the ring isn't that obvious. <laughs> On this trip, he must have touched some weird rabbit because he contracted a type of blood poisoning called tularemia, which is deadly for rabbits and rodents, but is extremely rare in humans and is only fatal in 1% of the cases. Dunn was the one person. Oh he was dead two weeks after his screen test on the day he was supposed to start shooting the movie at age 21. Yeah. So Dell got the ring back and decided maybe it's best to just lock this I'm thing up again. I shouldn't be so loose, fast yeah. and loose with the ring. Who but lends a ring out? Anyways, go ahead. If it's Rudolph Valentino's ring, you lend the ring out. Fine. You want to borrow my ring? <laughs> it's from uh, James Cagney. <laughs> oh yeah, give me, give me, give me. So he thinks I'll lock it up. That's fine. It's safe. But it wasn't. One night, a guy named James Willis either heard about this ring and wanted it for himself or just wanted to rob Dell. But either way, he broke into Dell's house and cracked open the safe. An alarm was set off and police showed up at the house who saw Willis, fired a warning shot that was much more than a warning because it hit him and killed him. Okay. The ring was in his the pocket. The warning, funerals are expensive. There's a warning. We don't know what's coming next. <laughs> so the ring was in his pocket when he was shot and killed. For the rest of Dell's life, the ring stayed in his safe. And when he died, the people who inherited his estate state decided to just keep the ring in the vault of a bank somewhere in LA. I could not find what bank it was. I don't know, but it doesn't end there. In the 50s or 60s, a guy named Alfred Hahn led a group of bank robbers and robbed this particular bank of $200,000 and the Ring of Destiny. The thieves were chased by cops and a couple of them were shot dead. Hahn was taken to court where he was sentenced to life in prison and said, had he known the ring was in that vault, he would have chosen another bank. Oh my god. But it didn't end there for the bank either. It was robbed several more times. There was a huge cashier strike and it also caught on fire but this is the last we know of the ring like i don't know it it, it might still be in whatever bank yeah. but some say it was actually stolen in one of the other robberies so it could be anywhere but again it doesn't even end there we don't know what the ring itself is doing to ruin people's lives right now but just the very residue of rudolph valentino is enough to still be causing tragedy there's a park in hollywood called delong pre park it's a tiny little thing it has absolutely nothing to do with rudolph valentino but but for some reason, a statue was unveiled in this park called Aspiration by Roger Noble Burnham, who's the guy who also did the statue of Tommy Trojan at USC. Oh, okay. For whatever reason, it was dedicated to the memory of Rudolph Valentino. A bunch of his fans just got together after he died, paid for it. It was unveiled May 6, 1930, yeah. which would have been his 35th birthday. Ceremony was presided over by Dolores Del Rio, who died eventually. Because <laughs> everyone does. As we all do. As the police will warn you, we all die eventually. <laughs> well, they shoot you. It was a nice gesture, even though it didn't make any sense to put it there, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, this ring cursed anything to do with Rudolph Valentino deep. Slight trigger warning here. Uh, one year after the unveiling of this statue, a 14-year-old girl was found on the bench in front of the statue. She had been chloroformed and sexually assaulted and died shortly after Jesus. at the hospital. Then on November 1st, 1934, a 30-year-old woman died in the bathroom right next to the statue after drinking a bottle of poison. Uh, for whatever reason, the park decided in July 1979 to double down on the Valentino Association and put up a bronze bust of him right near the first statue but there's also the stories of rudy's ghost being seen all around town his ghost has been seen at the beach house he lived in oxnard while he was filming the chic he's been seen in several hotels he used to stay at at paramount which is right by where his ashes are in the women's restroom at musso and frank's he's been seen oh, who hasn't <laughs> in, in april 1989 a lady said his ghost stooped her in the middle of the night in what turned out to be an old apartment building that he used to go hang out in a lot and then of course there's his old home the falcon layer the original building was demolished in 2006 but almost everyone who has stayed there has some sort of story who had stayed there yes. a 
woman was staying there shortly after he died and heard footsteps late at night and then went into the hallway and saw doors opening and closing on their own. And I was going to say the weird thing was, but that's pretty weird. Yeah. His two great Danes were still living there, Brownie and Rudy, which why would you name your dog after yourself? <laughs> I never get to say my own name. That's a good name. I always want to call myself and yeah, tell myself, myself I was a good boy. <laughs> so they had been trained to bark at anybody except Valentino. And while these doors were opening and closing, they were completely silent. So they should have been barking at yeah. this. Harry Carey said he saw a ghost while he owned the property and several of the stable workers have seen his ghost petting a horse <laughs> and they've quit. Like several people have yeah. quit. There have also been ghost horses seen there petting real people. <laughs> Pooping as they would. So some people think there are so many sightings of his ghost because he's trying to come back to destroy the Ring of Destiny once and for all, which yeah. is a Lord of the Rings reference that's too juicy to ignore. <laughs> but it's a weird thing that aside from just the people who were wearing the ring getting cursed in some way, it was just anybody or anything remotely related or nearby Rudolph Valentino because of this curse, yeah. it seems. Maybe the ring isn't cursed. Maybe he's cursed. Maybe. <laughs> maybe he cursed the ring anything revolving around his legacy which leads to maybe one last incident that you could attribute to this curse and we're going back a long way now back to the first episode again the falcon layer is in beverly hills on bella drive on a little hill that is right across a small street from another secluded house on a hill and that little street is called cielo drive Jesus. his house is a stone's throw away from the sharon tate murder house